You've seen how Swifty UI lets us make an implicit animation by attaching an animation modifier directly to a view. We can also animate bindings by attaching animation to a binding. But there's a third useful way we can make animations, and that's explicitly animating with a state change. We're saying, whatever changes here, animate the whole thing, please. This still does not mean we're trying to animate every frame of the animation by hand. That remains Swift UI's job. It'll still look at our views beforehand, look at them after, and animate between the two for us. Now that we're being explicit, we want an animation to occur when some arbitrary state change happens. It's not that extra binding, not that extra view, it's just us explicitly asking for an animation to occur here. To demonstrate this, here's our simple button code again. Button tap me, no action, some padding, background red, white foreground color, and a clip shape of circle. When this button's tapped, we're gonna make it spin around with a 3D effect. This can be done with another new modifier called rotation 3D effect, which can be given a rotation amount in degrees, as well as an axis to turn around. You wanna think of the axis like a skewer through your view. If you skewer through the X axis, like a big rod going through your view here, it'll mean your uh, button can spin forwards and backwards because it's skewered here, so it can only rotate around that skewer. If we skewer through the Y axis, it can rotate like this, round and round, because it's fixed otherwise. If we skewer through the Z axis or Z axis towards the screen depth wise, it can rotate around its normal axis like that. Making this requires some state we can modify. So let's start with that. We're going to say uh, at state private var animation amount is 0.0, .0 a double, zero degrees animation by default. Now we're going to ask this button to rotate around by animation amount along its y-axis. So again, skewer through the middle, spin around like this. So we'll say there is rotation 3D effect. This wants to know how much to rotate. I'm gonna say degrees of our animation amount. Let's add a bunch of line breaks here, which is not helpful. <laughs> Thanks, Xcode. And the axis is gonna be here. That is around the y-axis. So I'll just do zero x-axis, one for y-axis and zero for z-axis. So rotate around the y-axis. That's our skewer, straight down the middle. And now for the important part. We're gonna add some code to this uh, action of the button right here. So it adds 360 degrees to animation amount whenever it's pressed here. Now if we just write animation amount plus equals 360, then it'll happen immediately. There's no animation modifier attached to our view here. It'll just jump around and be the same as right now. It's rotating a full circle. Nothing's changed. But if we use a with animation function around this state change, Swift UI will make sure any changes from the new state will automatically be animated. So I'm going to say with animation, do that. And so now press Command R to run your code. I'll press tap me, and around it goes. It spins around, again, pinned vertically like this. I think it looks really good out of the box given how little Kobe actually did. So it's spinning a full circle amount every single time. Now, if you want to, experiment with axes here. Try like X1 and Y1. So we're pinning it in two axes now. You can get this diagonal spin, like that. Or you might want to do X0, uh, y0, z1, for example, spin depth-wise. It's a regular rotation, effectively, like that. Anyway, I'll stick with y1. Now, with animation, can be given extra values here to specify what kind of animation you want. For example, you might say, I want to use, just like elsewhere, a spring animation with duration of one and a bounce of 0 0.5, so half bouncy. And now we get a bouncy spinning thing like this. And it goes back and forward a little bit. So it just slightly overshoots and bounces back to its final target value. 